Hi, uh, my name is Ricardo. You probably know me from Potatoes. Uh, <laughs> lost, um, so in the ELC, we have made some presentations about how to do potato gradings. And I think we, we have the monopoly uh, of potatoes in, in the Linux community. So today, we are going to talk about something super simple. What is big and what is small, OK? Um, and what are the repercussions for this when we are upstreaming our work. So when you are comparing a big company with a small company, the first thing you are looking at is number of employees. So on the right, you see the Linaro Connect conference. And all those people, their main job is to upstream their work. Uh, and on the left side, uh, you see the PCB team of my company, the framework team, the FPGA team, the management team, and by team I mean the person. So uh, the, num the amount of resources is super scarce and, and you need to, to use them wisely uh, because when somebody is doing a job that is going to be useless, you have wasted your whole uh, power uh, workload for workforce for, for, that, uh, for that thing. So um, number of employees really matter a lot. Second thing is budget. So when you look into Amazon, you, you can find them in, in Morningstar, but, but when you look for my company, uh, no, we are not there. Uh, we are not even close to be there. There's not even stocks for, uh, for my company. So yeah, we have limited amount, not only of people, but also of, of money. So we need to be very careful of what we do and, and how we do. And the last thing what is very different from a small company to a big company is the scope. So uh, when we look into uh, Linaro, they are doing uh, things that are going to end up in mobile phones, TVs, notebooks. So there's a chance that many people are going to send their feedback uh, or even contribute. But when you look at what we do in my company, well, we do potato graders. So it's, it's quite difficult that a, a farmer in Siberia is going to send a patch for uh, fixing our cameras. So yeah, uh, we, we are alone along here. So all those three things matter a lot when you are comparing big company to a small company. And what is the usual workload when, when we are working on uh, a small company doing embedded, embedded work? What, what is our, how, at least how do we usually work for? Usually you start with something very easy. So your boss comes to your office and says, hey, uh, why don't we use this new sensor? Um, and then you buy an EV board. Uh, you get plenty of help of using that EV board. Uh, and it works. It works nicely. So your boss tells you how much time you need to use this, this camera. That, 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 that's a trick. Never answer that question. But if you answer that question and you, with the information that you got after testing your hardware, you will say, yeah, one week, two weeks, and, and then, then the shit storm come over your face. <laughs> it's complicated. Uh, you start to drink a lot of coffee. You don't see your family anymore. Um, the moment you bring the, big scope to, the biggest scope to your desk means that, oh fuck, it's difficult. So yeah, it's complicated. You don't see shit. You're trying to use this sensor. Then you start to look in Google. And the moment you don't find the answer in the first page of Google, Oh, fuck. It gets even worse when you start to read data sheets in Chinese. Uh, it's really bad. Um, the moment you can differentiate Chinese from Japanese just based on the letters, it's because you are in deep shit. But finally, you see the light at the end of the tunnel. You, you get some frames from the sensor, but th those are useless. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that, that moment is beautiful. You, you like it, but, but yeah, the, uh, the, the fun ends quite fast. Until suddenly, one day, uh, it works. Finally, you, you got the right documentation, or, or you finally to reverse engineer something that worked, and, and it works. Uh, and then you're very happy. And, and this is how you feel. Uh, I'm pretty sure you've seen this, this video. And 
It's when they managed to land uh, the Blue Origin. So you see a couple of engineers uh, looking at a piece of metal that weighs, I don't know how many tons. And yeah, it's, it's pretty sure. Uh, they start to be very happy with them. And then, come on. It's <laughs> That's exactly how you feel when you're doing embedded development. And I'm not kidding. When you manage to get a sensor that works and your product is finally working, you feel exactly like these dudes. And yeah, I, th I think it's great. But there's one problem. And it's, yeah, they managed to land it. They are super excited, they are super happy, you're in the highest moment of your, uh, of, yeah, you're happy, you're very happy. But that's just the beginning. Uh, you now need to go to the, you, yeah, you did the first part of the project, but now uh, you need to go to Mars. You need to explain to your boss that, yeah, we spent, I told you it was going to be two weeks, we have wasted a couple of months in this project, and now I need some time to upstream this work. How do I convince my boss to give me the extra time and effort to upstream it? Well, of course, there are some benefits. And that's what you need to, to explain to your boss. Uh, and what are those benefits? Well, if you manage to upstream your work, that means that you are using the latest version of, of your, those projects. You're also you're working upstream. So, you're going to get access to the developers, which means you can send a mail to uh, the mailing list and you will get a, a reply. If you try to send an email to the, to the mailing list saying, hey, I use kernel 2.4 and my USB 3.0 is, is not uh, pro in my hardware, I can tell you the answer of Greg K or Linux. Well, no, Linux not anymore. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> but if you also if you get some code upstream you are more likely to get help in the RSC from the developers because they will know you and you will be working with them so getting access to those developers is, is really great the next thing is uh, you are going to reduce to maintenance cost if you upstream your work if everything you do is upstream uh, this is how difficult it is to uh, merge, is to uh, upgrade your code to the latest version of Linux. So the first line you need to do is G3 base Linux master. Then you will press enter and that's it. That's all you have to do. Uh, this is, I did it yesterday and it uh, how all the work I had to do to uh, rebase our kernel tree into uh, the um, latest uh, Linux master. So it's, it's really didn't have to do anything. And I managed to build it and, and it worked. So um, yeah, you will reduce your maintenance cost. And also there will be other people that are going to maintain your, your code. If your code is upstream, they will uh, update the APIs that will eventually change in the kernel. The next thing is training. And if you get your code upstream, all the review process is going to be a training exercise. You're going to learn a lot about code. You're going to see other perspectives to your code. Uh, two weeks ago, I sent a patch to convert to Bayer 10P mode, uh, which is just reordering the data. And that code uh, wouldn't run on a specific version of ARM because it will uh, be using uh, memory out of, or out of order. I would have never thought about it. But the person that did the review look at it and now I know about that and if I manage to see that when I see that error in the future I will be able to identify and fix my code so when we have employees that have went through the process of uh, up, uh, upstreaming their work and uh, fixing their their bugs and they are going to learn a lot and that training is is unpayable the next thing is recruiting and for us, we are a very small company doing a very specific work. Uh, what can I offer to the employees in this market uh, to compete with Amazon, with Google, with Red Hat? Uh, well, uh, 
you can upstream. If you come to my company, you are going to, to be able to upstream. And for some people, this is going to be a very valuable thing. Actually, I know people that have said no to one of these big companies, yes, because they were, they were going to end up in a team where they couldn't upstream their work. So, yeah, this is something you can offer when you're a small company. And by the way, we are hiring. Uh, visibility. So we are a tiny company in the middle of Denmark with eight employees, a revenue that it's, yeah, tiny. is probably what Google spends in coffees for their employees. But last year in the yields in Embedded World in Germany, the CTO of AMD were talking about us. We were on the stage with him. And the only reason is because we are upstream in our work. We are small, but we are still a little bit relevant in the open source community. We get access to the most beautiful room I have ever spoken. So yeah, we will have, we will have never get access to this if we wouldn't upstream our work. And then when you, ups, when you upstream your work and you compare that to other companies, uh, we are not that bad, we are not that small. We are like, what, five patches away from Headwell Packer? Um, we contribute more than the NSA? Yeah, sounds great. I mean, <laughs> and yeah, you can also get free, free features. So what does that mean? Um, I've got two very good examples. Uh, when we started using the USB 338, which is a USB controller, we got some very horrible driver from their manufacturer. We managed to get it upstream, we modified, we, uh, we got it upstream. The amount of features were very limited, and since it's upstream, more people have used it, and they have fixed our bugs, fixed the manufacturer bugs, and added functionality. Now it works faster than, than ever, and, and we would have never got that far for free, uh, and also, uh, the FSA, blah, 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 that horrible name. That's a serial port. Uh, we added support for uh, Ares, Ares 485, and there's more people that added things like uh, support for special uh, speeds. Yeah, it's, uh, we couldn't have done it because we didn't have access to that documentation. But there's people out there that have access to that documentation, and that gives me to, to the next topic, which is access to documentation. Most of our job is reverse engineering uh, on, because we don't have access when you're a small company to all the documentation that you, that you want. Uh, especially when you're looking at system on chips, it's really difficult to get to the right documentation. And when you are streaming your work, you are working with people that get access to the documentation and, and they will be able to tell you if what you're trying to do is impossible with the hardware they will be able to tell you, yeah, maybe we will release something very soon, so you shouldn't waste your time on this. Or sometimes they leave a PDF in your email that they forget about it, forgot about it. And that really helps. And the only reason you will be able to get access to that documentation is because you're upstreaming. And then you, if you contribute enough, you will be able to be in uh, a kernel summit, kernel media mini summit, you will be able to be in the same room with people that are deciding the next APIs, the next features of, of the open source pro uh, products, open source software. Um, and when you're in that room, you can represent the interest of your company. Uh, most of the people, when they are, cont all the people that are working in open source, when they are defining their APIs, they are doing it based on their needs. It's not that they do not want to support your needs. It's because they do not understand your needs. They are not aware of your needs. Uh, when, we ha when we propose changes for, uh, that are changes that are required for industrial camera, people were very welcoming when we did it. And we finally got most of, them, most of those changes merged and some of those changes could have only been there if they were from the beginning. Once an API is in the kernel, it's, you cannot change it, or you, you shouldn't change user space. So 
uh, you need to be there, you need to contribute. So, now your boss is convinced. So, now you, if, if you are a, a manager, you should stop watching the video or you should leave the room because now is the drawbacks. So, what is bad about contributing? First of all, it's time. It requires a lot of time. As I told you from, from the very beginning, it's time consuming and, and, and you need uh, uh, yeah, you need to care about open source. You need to understand what you are doing. So, yeah, time. Second is time zones. You're working with sometimes people from the States and or from India. And the problem when you're working with them is that you send an email in the morning and you receive an answer at 4 a.m. in the morning. And that time if when you are in a hurry for finishing a product, uh, sometimes it means you have to stay at till four in the morning to speak with them in the IRC. And that's not nice when you have family. So yeah, time some sucks. And the other th is uh, multitasking. Uh, when you are working alone in your office, you have your single timeline, you can prepare for, you, you will prepare for what do you want to do. You say, today I do. Uh, a sensor, tomorrow do the motor, but when you're working upstream, you will be sending patches to five different projects and all those will return to you in different time manners. Uh, and make that compatible with your schedules, sometimes is very difficult. And the last thing is rules. Every single project has their own rules. They have their own code style, they have their own way to uh, send upstream to upstream their work, the review process is different. So, yeah, you need to be aware of that. Uh, it will require some time and, and knowledge. But what you get out of it is much more of the drawbacks. So, definitely, you, you can contribute because if this tiny company in the middle of Winterland has been able to contribute this much, uh, your company can, can also do it. And that's it. Thank you very much. Um, I guess you, I don't know if you have some questions. I don't think I have a PCB to give away for free for the questions, so. <laughs> no? Yes. <laughs> so is the potato counter device tree upstream? Everything that uh, everything that can be buy, that can be bought is upstream. Awesome. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just want to add something. Uh, I just want to add something. In fact, what you gain by uh, upstreaming is respect. You gain respect from everyone, and that's huge because that's, it's what opens uh, all these doors for you. Hmm. Yeah. And just to clarify the potato question, uh, what QTech does <laughs> is the cameras. Okay, so all the camera logic, all the camera, all the drivers, everything is upstream or in the process of being upstream. But the logic of our customer that counts the potatoes, yeah, that, that's his IP. For the camera sensor, like there are like literally a few people that are really, really good at it and they can get like whatever you need to done with the sensors in like a day or two. So mm -hmm. like have you ever like looked for like exploring different parts of the network that's available to you or do you just like see a problem and just try to like mm -hmm. tackle it? Because sometimes I see a lot of like people and companies like like who don't have the resources necessarily, either don't bother to tackle it or um, spend a lot of time tackling it rather than just like utilize the commercial side that's available. Um, we are trying, everything is in our hands. So if there's a good reason to, to hire an external party for helping us with our process, of course we will do that. Um, but most of the times we try to do it ourselves first because we will get the knowledge in house, so and, and by failing you you learn sometimes a lot. So that's that's our strategy. 
but sometimes you end up in a net deadlock and then you have to hire a company so and yeah but usually if we have the documentation we don't have any problems uh, doing the work it's just access to documentation that really kills us <laughs> and finding bugs uh, yeah yeah thank you very much